Nobel economics laureate Edward Prescott says the euro is doomed, banks are dinosaurs, and America will have a giant collapse much bigger than in 2008. Mr. Prescott, let's start with the euro. Why is it dead in the water? If you have four children and give them all credit cards to go out and buy, uh, but tell them that they have to behave responsibly, and one of them doesn't, <laughs> well, what do you... It's not, there's going to be problems. And now you have to sort of cut off that. Uh, it's analogous to the subprime mortgage, uh, which should not have been made. Uh, it was not beneficial to either side. But the government wanted to foster home ownership and pretty much set up a bad system. The problem is that the Germans and the French lent to somebody they should not have lent to, and somebody who should not be borrowing and was not as should not have been borrowing uh, there should have been people monitoring the market we should let their more like a corporation in the u.s they have some big ones and they've gone many have gone bankrupt and the old people vote <laughs> the old people want a place to save yeah. so the f french and uh, german governments said well lend to the banks and then the bank said, what are we going to do with all this money? And they said, well, you lend. Why has Greece gone so badly wrong? I think there's a good chance of uh, defaulting. I do not think that'll be an economically major event. Uh, there'll be, the disruption will be very short-lived. You know, some of the states in the United States went bankrupt. <laughs> In 1840, the federal government did not bail out the states. Um, and there was not a major disruption in real, in the output and employment. They may go bankrupt, default, and stay in the euro, but the euro may just completely collapse. So it's not, the advantage to having it seems to be more of a symbolic. It's true that it's convenient for tourists when they move between the states, and but countries that did not enter the euro have done as well or better than those that uh, did. It didn't seem to be a big positive benefit to the, uh, the members. The ones that didn't join, you know, are Sweden, Denmark, and the United Kingdom. What are the reasons why the euro has failed? They're just retired at such a young age. They're just not a and make promises to the citizens which you can't honor that's bad and of course people get upset when promises are not honored western europe has no choice except to reform and they have started to reform um, the swedes have effectively cut their tax rates they've privatized their saving system along the lines of uh, Australia, and this is an effective tax reduction. The amount that the Europeans are working has gone up a little bit. They've raised the retirement age. There's a little bit slow in phasing some of this in. There's very little discussion of how you actually leave the euro as an economist. Are you saying it's, uh, it's could, you, could you lay out the steps? Do you have to issue some of your own currency? Um, there will be debts determined in Europe and that will in the euros that, to people in other countries and there'll be a lot of legal actions to settle that when uh, countries default. I suspect the Greek businesses have gotten the money, a lot of it, out of uh, Greece and into euro accounts in uh, more stable countries. Brussels is using this crisis to grab more powers from national governments. How does that make things even worse? The danger is centralization. Uh, China, in from, uh, from about 1,000 to 1,300, was the richest country, the most advanced. They had gone, to, they had done much better than Europe. Uh, and they were by far the leader. But then they, under the Ming Dynasty, they got centralized and then they started preserving the status quo. And it was not the provinces lost their power. The organized 
the censor it. That was like the, the press that were an institution set up to criticize the government within the government, which is an unusual rage, but that worked. The Ming Dynasty got rid of that. Uh, and then technologically, regression set it in there. A few people from the other end of the Euro-Asia landmass came and humbled that great empire. Why is the U.S. economy doomed to fail, and what will happen? They haven't got rid of the too big to fail problem. Um, they get real big. People know, who lend to these uh, financial institutes know that they will be bailed out or expect it, and therefore the institution can borrow at a lower rate. And they, so they gamble, the, these institutions, and oh, the banks are the, the, yeah, the groups of people that have this uh, operate this business enterprise called the bank. I get scared with the Washington-New York connection. Sort of, I don't know, just government likes to get favors out to certain people and then get big contributions. There'll be some bankruptcy. There'll probably have to be some major intervention by the Fed uh, to avoid, I think they call them bank runs, systemic risk, where everybody wants to get their money out. They come close to having that problem now in Greece. Uh, but it may be the rational thing to do. How will this collapse compare to 2008's subprime crash? I don't think the 2008 was that big, not as big as no. the savings and loan crisis. There, these, um, the Federal Savings and Loan Deposit Insurance Corporation went bankrupt. And the government had to step in and take the assets of these companies. And uh, the depositors got, um, and then they sold these assets. And they, it was not they brought in was eight percent of GMP. Eight percent of current GMP is a, a big number. It's a, it's a trillion dollars. No, it's over a trillion. And then they sold that off there, and they got six percent of GMP back. And the taxpayers made up the other two percent. There were some hidden tax, effective tax increases. And that there, at that time, they were bailing out the, the big banks in hidden ways. But, um, that's what you always have when you get. There should be a good separation between the state doing its job and the various agencies. The Fed should be independent. The statistical collection agencies should be independent. And I would say the financial and business sector should be s separated. So America hasn't actually dealt with its 2008 bank and credit issues at all? In 19, I believe it was 60, we did not have uh, credit cards. They had to pass some special legislation. and. That, and then the war, and then and over time, uh, they've become quite important. Uh, you can get about six or ten of those with the introductory offers at very low interest rates, and people would just roll them over. Some of the real estate was financed that way. As long as the price of real estate was going up, these people did great. But things can't keep going up indefinitely. How much are Western banks to blame for the mess the world economy is in? I'm not sure. Why even we even need banks uh, with, in the fractional reserve sense? Why we need institutions that borrow from one group of people sh in a very short term demand deposit and lend a little bit longer um, or much longer? We, I've been working on the problem of financial reform. The U.S. is going to have a financial crisis in the not too distant future. The Dodd Frank bill was poorly designed. But I want to be ready when the next crisis comes with a good s system. And I've been fostering people to work on this problem of designing a better financial system that doesn't have this risk. And they get too big to fail. That's And who ends up subsidizing them? Taxpayers.